so i have started the recording okay 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 so today basically we are going to look at uh, how to design a fast api backend uh, i will do an example uh, that i developed like for practice projects uh, you can find the project in my github so if you go like into my github there are a couple of practice projects that i made so you guys can download and play around with it like it also has a front end that is that uses react so i will demonstrate the insta backend today so if you guys want you can go to my github and you can download it and play around with it if, if you guys want so basically uh, we are using fast api uh, as you know so uh, it uses uvi icon to run the server uh, in the background so i am using a virtual environment here i am running the server in the background so the command is as you guys already know you have like seen a previous fast api courses that other people gave so if you icon main that is my file name and app and i'm clear doing the load so whenever i change anything in the files it will automatically pick that change up and it will like uh, update the server uh, accordingly restart the server accordingly so i'm using it uh, so if you go here in the fast api like the the back end the api is the docs the swagger api so you can see uh, i'm authorized currently the, this is a basic user like a cat i created a user so the password is also cat so so this is the fast api default authorization login we can use this to authenticate our swagger ui then you can use the authenticated uh, endpoints uh, right so no issue in that so when i will be using the react and all i will i need the token uh, the jwt token so with that i will store that in react uh, like browser local storage and i will like send that uh, key every time i make a request with react so here i can also do that like i do not need to like add the grant type and all i will just app say cat and password will also cat and if i do the execution it will give me a access token so in react end i can use this access token this jwt token and uh, request uh, every time i need uh, some data i need to post something and what not okay okay so uh, here i am just initializing the app that is the fast api app and you can see i am adding different routers also here so these routers are basically different components of our application like for user related tasks i created a user router i will show that eventually uh, for the post related task i created the post router for authentication in related tasks i give the auth router and comment for comments router for comment related tasks so initially i have added just the index page since it is an api not an like uh, static web application uh, since it uses react for everything so it is like just a standard api just returning a text in the index page and what is this engine so i am so this statement means i am creating all the tables that is defined in the our uh, models so this is the uh, structure that i use generally when i like write fast api applications so i create a separate folder called authentication that is a module that has the uh, jw the authentication and everything so it creates a token and what not right and uh, i also have a method that i receive like like get the user from particular token so as you know when we uh, send like uh, a request to create a token we encode the jwt uh, encode the dictionary so the dictionary contains two things in my case one is the user and one when the exp the exp parameter so exp means when the it expires so default is uh, 30 minutes so it is in minutes so encode that and send the token so whenever we get the token right so whenever we get the token we can use that token to decode and get the data so i am just 
so this method does what it receives the token as a string okay and it depends on what to scheme so this is the scheme so the why i did that basically so so when i did that depends on what to scheme when the token is here so this is an authenticated endpoint so token string is equal to depends on what to scheme means we cannot use this endpoint or it is function basically uh, so without any authentication so by proxy when i add depends OAuth to scheme in this function uh, whenever i add this get user from token method as a dependency in any particular endpoint that endpoint becomes authenticated so here basically i am uh, creating an exception uh, like preemptively am um, i adding the detail and whatnot a 401 exception and i'm getting the data from the jwt token and uh, from the username key uh, i am getting the particular username from database and get is returning the uh, particular user object and if it uh, the user is not found in any case or anything then i'm raising the credentials exception that is 401 the could not validate credentials so this is basically the two functions that facilitates the validation so it, so if you do not want to get the user from the token which i use usually for ease of access because usually when we authenticate somebody we need that user but if you do not require that you can just use this function create auth token or uh, then uh, create the auth token and use the dependency as OAuth to scheme right so whenever in any 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 endpoint so this this line if you use in any endpoint it will do the authentication part but we are going above and beyond to get the user also from the authentication token and using that inside the endpoint so this is the auth structure this is very standard JWT auth structure that FastAPI uses. So for the auth routes, what am I doing? So this need to be, uh, so, so this is the auth authentication route. So log for logging in what I'm doing. So I am just taking a OAuth to password request form, right? So this is for the login thing that I did. So just I, that I showed you that it is giving is this dictionary, right? So token type bearer user ID and username is cat, and this is the user token. So this is basically returning. So this we if you use any type of authentication, it requires OAuth to password request form. So in the login endpoint, I'm doing that basically. So for every login, I'm using this, and uh, so I'm getting the user, right? So db user dot username is equal to request dot username. This is standard SQL alchemy syntax to how to filter a username from that. So db dot query. So what which model we are trying to use? So that is the db user, and we are filtering that username matches the request's past username. If like it does not any does not user does not exist, then we are raising the exception. Otherwise, we are like verifying the uh user password so we are when storing the thing we are also uh, always like uh hashing the password so when checking the password against the database so we are like we have to hash it again to check against the database so we're doing that here so if we go into that function so this is a hasher uh thing i made so it is taking the function and uh, checking its hash uh, accordingly all right so this is the auth part so i like to do like well, set up like this and if we go into the db so this is the db engine setup so nothing's too fancy we are using sqlite here but you can easily use any type of database string that you like here like postgresql and whatnot and i'm setting up the engine uh, and this is this is standard and I'm using a get DB method that returns the uh, database instance, basically the session local instance. And this is the database part completed. So as you saw that uh, this engine is being returned from db.engine. 
and we are using that engine to create the model database uh, all the models tables so we saw the authentication part we saw the db part that is creating the engine and then we go to the models so we also saw the hasher that is verifying the password right so uh, so it, it is password the plain password and hash password basically it is verifying so now we if we go to the models we can see there are three tables that i created one is the user and it is self explanatory what are the fields i'm using like the uh, primary key is the uh, integer and it is id and others are string one is the date created that is date time column and there is a reverse relationship between them like it is called back populate so if you guys ever worked with django and all you know how reverse relationship works so basically it does what we can let's say we created a uh, object of the db post right we can so part for particular db post we can access that posts user using the dot method and the user of that post so it like basically creates a dependency a two way two way circular uh, connection between the two tables so we can say if i get a user right so i i get a user object and if i do user dot posts so it will give me all the posts related to that particular user so that is how this works so i created a, uh, a reverse relationship so back populates again with this uh, uh, db post and db comment here so the comment uh, and post are dependent on each other so these tables are being created in main dot uh, main function whenever we are saying models.base.metadata and create all and then passing the engine that is coming from the db this one okay so why i added this origins because we are using react and anything that is not from our same origin so fast api i think runs on port 8000 by default um, yeah for for 8000 by default so here if the rec all the request came from port 8000 in localhost then it would be fine but since uh, we are using react the requests are coming from a different port so react will be uh, running independently in our development server and react usually runs on port 3000 so we have to add the cross middleware and allow that origin so basically i'm importing the cross middleware and uh, adding that origins and allowing methods but on that origin so allow credentials what all methods are allowed all methods are allowed so get post and everything what headers are allowed every headers are allowed but we can filter this out on uh, like header basis on methods basis so i would say key uh, only like get methods that allow when uh, it is coming from this origin so this can be done like uh, we can use add middleware multiple times okay then we can define a complex flow of different domains that we want to add and remove that can be done so here i am doing app dot mount so here i am also i also have a image uploading service so if i click close this you can see post.upload i also have image uploading service so image uploading service like we need to have a static path to access that image right so that is how this is how we do it so you import static files from fast api static files so first we use app.mount then we give the actual directory name so where in current structure that directory is in our web structure so i say it is images so this folder so you can see all other uh, other images are here that i uploaded so it is in our current struct directory structure then i use static files and i use which name basically i will use uh, for that so we use uh, images here and what name we will use to refer it when you you construct some urls 
so again if somebody have worked on django previously they they know that uh, uh, we use urls as url templates like using uh, jinja jinja tour or something uh, you we can access the urls with uh, like placeholders and all so we can use image route like this if we want to use that in a static website like jinja or something so this is uh, how the main file basically are is working so if i go on the i will like any questions till now anybody hello no shantanu all right how many people are here okay so basically we will go then to our route section we will come so here everything uh, in db hasher and models is explained so we will come back to this comment operation and all when we look at those routes so if i go on the routes so first route we have is the user route so nothing is happening too like drastic here we are creating a user so when we define a route in fast api we use the router api router and the prefix so which url endpoint that uh, we want to use uh, for this particular route so it start with slash user so after the initial url so slash user is the route for this route so after that we stack up multiple endpoints on top of it so here is the endpoint for slash user slash new so whenever the user goes on the slash user slash new so what happens they are ex so this endpoint is expecting a post request that is the user display so this is a schema so if i go into this user display schema that is here so user display schema so this is you can see so so these are display schemas so we can say ki, uh, what is this expecting so this is nothing but a let's say package of data uh, that the uh, that it is expecting from the let's say we use postman or something so it is nothing but a package of data that they are expecting the, the endpoint is expecting so it is expecting what basically it is expecting the username it is expecting the email it is expecting the date created okay so this orm is equal to true is nothing but uh, that the back populars method and what not we can use this so if we enable this it works so and also in display schema specifically so if we use something to display is display schema so then uh, so this is a display schema so so it is it needed here so orm mode true is needed otherwise it won't convert the data that is coming and to proper format okay so if i go back to the user routes okay so this is the uh, sorry I, I like this like got a little thing wrong so this is the response model so in every response model so it is also a schema that uh, like it expects what so in from database when we are like done with the thing so we are returning that so we are returning that so we are returning create user and we are returning the create user after the user is created so we are returning the user object right so in that case uh, let me just close this so in that case uh, it will automatically convert the data that is user object to particular json data that we can consume from the web browser so basically this is the work, uh, job of the display schema and you you will also see if there was a re user request schema there will be there uh, that will be present there so yeah so it will be a user request schema so this is as i said this is nothing but a package or bundle that the data comes in and uh, we can do anything with it so basically this is a package we can conveniently access the data from. so kind of works like django serializers if anybody knows it so we are expecting what we are expecting a username a email and a password so three things we are expecting from the user request schema 
So after we uh, receive this user expect uh, like request schema, we are also uh, creating a dependency here. So what is a dependency? That dependency is a get DB function. So you already saw what get DB was. If we go to the database section and go to DB, so this is a get DB. This is returning the engine, the session local, basically. So fast API has the ability to make the endpoints depend on something. So depend on another function. So automatically what depend does, it creates an object of the, so it calls that get DB function. It get, gets the return object of that and assigns it automatically to this session uh, type of variable that is the DB. So here you can see what is happening. So, so DB is here, we got the request. So user, the type of, request it is user type request that is defined in the schema it expect these three things and uh, then uh, we are passing to the creative well, these are nothing but convenient methods like create user and all these will take us to the database and user operations so if i like go to that definition so here you can see nothing too fancy fast APIs is really easy so what is happening uh, so this request is the collected data that is coming from the front end that the user is sending either to the uh, React end or maybe Postman and in our case, uh, Swagger UI. So data is coming. So we are creating a DB user object. The DB user object is nothing but the model that we're importing from the uh, database models. So what it needs basically. It needs a username, so we are assigning the uh, request dot username. As I said, request is nothing but a package that is a convenient way to get a uh, we get an object of all the things that are like coming in. And uh, after that, uh, we receive the password, but we already has the password when we store it. And date created basically we say date time dot date time dot now, nothing fancy. And we add the user, we commit it and we refresh it. So this refresh has significance. So whenever we say db.refresh, what it does, it basically updates the primary key. So as you see, you do not see any primary key present. So we set the auto increment curve. Whenever we like add a thing, so it should auto increment. So index.true, so this and uh, setting it a primary key, both of them combine automatically increases the count. So SQL Alchemy takes care of it, of the, uh, so where is the user operation gone? Yeah, or the count of the user. So first user will be like primary key one, second user two and whatnot. So after everything is done, we get the user object and we're returning it. And if I go to the user route, so user route is doing what? So it is returning the user object. Now I already set up a response model for it. That is the user display, right? So what it is doing? So if I go to the uh, schemas, so we saw that this is the user display model. So it is like serializing it. So we are getting the object and we're converting those objects fields to particular JSON data, right? So in this ORM true method, the significant, this is really cool actually. So what is happening here? So if say a user has posts here, so if I say posts here, here, if I added this, currently it would not work. I have to change a lot of things there. But if I say posts is type posts or some other, other schema, so here the, I think already done it. So you can see that uh, if I like reverse it, now what is so if i display something and that particular model has a back population dependency on some other model and if that so we can add that comments like this post has a back populate dependency with the comments okay and it will automatically display all the comments related to that post when we like uh, use this post display schema so we are seeing so this is type of comments and a list of comment display object so we have to also uh, set up a comment display so as you can see what it returns id content username and timestamp so for 
just setting this ORM mode true, it automatically gives us the relate, relative objects, like how many comments a post have. So it automatically returns it. We do not have to explicitly query it. So this is, this is how amazing it is. So if I go back to the user, so is user display model, it displays the user. So let's see that in action. So if I go, so user route is not, do not need any authentication. So if I use, let's say, Shantanu, email Shantanu at the rate gmail.com and password is Shantanu. Okay. If I like execute it, you can see the user is created and this is the response body. So this, this, this JSON data, we can see this because of that user display model. Okay. This is amazing. So we are so it is doing two things for us. It is serializing the data for us, and also it is like if any reverse relationships are present, it will grab all the related things to that particular like object and show it. I will I will show you that also. So this is what is happening in the user route. So if I go back to main, so I see that post router. Right. So if I go to the post router, the router in post. So here, a uh, lot of things are here. So for creating a new post, right? So here it requires uh, a user auth object. So current user. So this is an authenticated endpoint. As I said, get current user from token. So it is expecting a uh, authentication, and from that token we are getting the user so i already told you guys how this is working that uh, from the token we are decoding the user and getting from that user name we are getting the user object and we're returning it so this is a authenticated endpoint so create post what is happening it is same as that uh, user thing so it is creating that it is inside the post operations by the way inside the db so i like to keep the route separate and everything like the insert, delete, and comment, and whatnot, I like to keep that in inside DB. And for particular like routes, I create a like comment route for comment operations, for post or post operations, and whatnot. Okay. So it is just just creating the post, and uh, it is reusing the post display schema. So if I go to that post display schema, you can see what it is returning. It is returning the post ID the image URL of that post, the image type of that post, the caption of that post, date created, the user of that post. So this user resolve resolution that, OK, we have a post ID name uh, of, with the ID of 32. So which user owns that post? So it will automatically resolve due to this ORM is equal to true. That's how amazing it is. And it will automatically resolve how many comments are there. And it, it will like display the comments based on the schema that is the comments display here. OK, so if I go to the Swagger UI and I think I am authorized already. Yes, I lo I'm logged in. So I will create this is authenticated endpoint. So I create a new post. So I try it out. So. First, I need to upload a URL, image URL, because a post requires uh, a image URL. So image URL can be two types in my application. It can either be absolute URL, that is, we are uploading the image directly to our uh, like images folder. So here, with the UID. Otherwise, what we can do, we can say ki, uh, uh, we can grab a random url from the internet and that we can add here so both can be done so let me show you the way how i upload so this upload function is also authenticated so if i go out of the post of like post routes so you can see the upload so we are expecting a file type object right so file so this is uh this in python we call this three dots ellipsis it is basically a placeholder uh, and we are creating an object uh, so uh, in in fast api so in python ellipsis is a placeholder 
uh, but in fast api it means that this file parameter is required so entering this three dots means this is absolutely required you cannot access this endpoint or execute the endpoint without this file parameter okay so it is a file type parameter right uh, with the upload file type so it is a so this is uh, what type of object it expects uh, so what operation so uploading a file, it is a type of upload file and it is a file object. So what is happening after that? I'm creating a path of the images folder that I have. I'm creating a UUID hex of it and adding an underscore before that image name. So like two names, if, the, if I upload the same type of image twice, it will save it twice with the UUID properly. So UUID will be unique. And I'm just like saving it and returning the path of it, okay? So I, I need the path of this uploaded image to be able to create a new post. This is uh, this will this will happen in the React and also like uh, React will first use that token auth bearer up. So React is storing that token in Bows and Rocker, right? So it is using that token to do some requests, and uh, after the request is done, uh, so it is uploading the thing, and it is getting the return as a file object right the file path so it is using then that path to create the post so in react end first it is uploading the file then it is like uh, creating the post so we will do that from our end also so for the post upload we are already authenticated we will say select a file so let's say this one so i will just upload a screenshot so I will see, oh, my credential is expired. So authorize. And I come back here in the post upload, try it out, choose a file, uh, 162, whatever. So you can see the image path is given here. Okay. We will copy it and we will go back in the post new section. And there we will try it out. We will say the image URL is this. One second. We will say the email URL is this, and we will say the image type is absolute because we're storing it in our end. And caption, I will say some screenshot. And I will just execute it. And it is successfully uploaded. Okay. So what we created a post, right? So a post's ID is eight. So we will copy that post ID just now. So we will copy it. So its image is this. If we like use this uh, in our like 127.8000 slash images, you can see the images. Okay. So this is happening because of the mount point we set it up uh, in the static for the static files. So these it is showing up to that particular so images and that after that so this we created just a post right so some screenshot is the post name we have a date we have a user who created it that is cat and this resolution of that user is happening because of the uh, auto populates back populates thing and where it is happening due to the orm is equal to two in that schema all right so uh, that is happening and uh, if i want to see my post also right so let's let's make a comment first so i need to make a comment and which post id i need to make a comment on it will say post 8 and comment says this is cool right and i'm making a comment and comment is created okay so comment id is 20 so if i go back and see all posts uh, and 
I see try it out and I see all the posts that are currently in my database so six seven and our post was eight right so here you can see against our post that is the number eight and the image we uploaded screenshot 682 there is a comment associated with it that is called uh, this school and with the comment id 20. so this amazing thing is happening because it is automatically resolving whatever the reverse relationship it has uh, with the comments so the post model with the comments model with its help with the help of the schemas and the orm is equal to two this is really really amazing if you ask me so it is returning the list of comment display and we can also control what we can display in that particular comment so that is cool so we saw how to create a uh, so we saw the all post get all method we saw how to create a post we saw how to upload a post and we can easily update a post also. So you can go back here. And if I like collapse it. So update, I just keep the ID of it. So try it out. So let's say post number eight. And image URL, uh, I have to enter it again. So let's just make it a garbage something and caption this is. okay and i will just do this and post it updated and you can see the updated post body it is coming back and the image url that i have sent is gone because i have just updated with it the garbage value okay but the caption is say the, so the caption i pass this is an update it is there and uh, the comment that was associated with that post is also here right that is cool and we can delete a post also. So we'll just say eight. So that post is gone. So OK is coming back from here. All right. So that covers the post. Now, if I go back to the main function, we, the next is the uh, auth. So auth router I already like saw. So auth router, it is not here. So as I said, the auth routes is in the authentication. So oh, you already saw this. So this is basically the login endpoint. Nothing special here. So after that, the that is remaining. There is a comments router. So if I go back to the comments router, sorry, here, it is doing a lot of things also. So first we create the comment, right? So what we need when we create the comment? So we need a comment request schema, first of all, because we're making a request. So what it needs? It needs the content and the post ID, obviously. And for the comment display, where the response model that is uh, that for the comment, what we need? We need the ID, the content, the username of that, and the timestamp. Okay, so we already saw how we created a comment. We can get a comment also, nothing special. It is displaying the comment. So, so let's say uh, comment ID 20. Somebody, I think, raised a hand. Oh, the form. So we, if you execute it, so this comment ID, so the comment we created like this is cool, it is here. So I haven't handled the, so this is a thing you can see that even though the post is deleted, the comment is there. So I could have added a validation that whenever a post is being deleted, right? So a cascade relationship, like whenever a post is being deleted, all the comments of it are also being deleted. So I haven't added it because it is SQLite for just for demonstration purposes. So we can get a comment. We can uh, like but get a get all comments of a particular post. So here comment post ID all. So we can see that uh, 
the comment post ID all in point. So we, it is basically displaying the comment display schema. And uh, it is a authentication needed. It, it, authentication is needed here. Uh, so I think authentication is needed here. No, of course, because we are not adding the user auth, so current user. So we, there is no authentication needed here. We are just getting the DB session. And if we go to the comments operation, what we are doing, we're querying the DB comment with the filter post ID is equal to post ID. So whatever comments have a particular post ID, return it. And if I go to the comments.py, you can see uh, the response model should be a list of comment display. Exactly. Yeah. A list of comments display objects that uh, will be serialized to JSON. OK. So if I do, let's say, for post 3, is there any comments? Yeah. There is a uh, comment for post 3. That is comment number 19. There could be multiple returned here. So delete comment and whatnot you saw, and we are using the convenient methods uh, like delete, get all post, comments for post, update comment, and whatnot. So it is all inside this comment operations. So here, uh, basically, the same as the user one, we are like uh, give, taking the session local variable and uh, creating a DB comment based on that, right? And uh, we are using db dot comment and refresh to increase the primary key. For get single comment, we are also doing something like uh, is similar, but we are getting the first one. For getting all comments, we get all. Uh, if there are multiple things, we get an all option. Otherwise, it returns a string. So delete comment. We are also getting the comment object where get queried from the string, and uh, if the comment we also added a validation here as you can see if the user passed so for delete comment there is an authentication setup so if i go back to the comments route you can see the authentication is here so we are getting the user that is currently logged in from the jwt token and that is uh, like giving us the authentication and after that, when we do the delete comment, we're passing the current user dot username. And if that comment does not belong to us, so if the comment dot username is not equal to the username that is being currently is logged in, then we cannot delete it. So say 401 unauthorized. And if the comment is not found, as you can say, we are creating an exception that is 404 that is not found, right? And we're deleting the comment and we're committing it and returning in OK. So update comment is like same. We're like doing the update method of uh, so we're getting the comment object and doing the update and we're updating the content only. OK. And we're returning the updated comments object. And it will be displayed by the comment display schema. So that is how it is working. And as I already explained, the operations part, right, and whatnot. So, if any other endpoints are there that we can explore, so we can comment update now. All endpoints are covered. So now I can take questions. If anybody have any questions regarding to fast API, uh, ask me, please. I'm all ears. <sighs> OK, so nobody has any questions, I assume. So this is the everything I covered. As I said, you can go into my GitHub. There's, these things are public. There are other like some Android apps also that I created uh, like a few months ago. And the Insta like front end is here. So you can like play around with it. That it is totally made in React. So you can just. Uh, see like app js image upload and whatnot so how i'm using the keys oh, sorry how am i using the keys how i'm fetching it so uh first time like getting the state 
on that right so handle upload method so for first i'm uploading it uh, the, the image and after that the image url i'm doing the post also so two fetch api functions are finally working here right so you can look into this if you need you can play around with it and the as i said the back end uh, thing is also there i uploaded around october 2 i think yeah so that's all uh, everything i have to like show you guys today but as i said we have like around 10 minutes any questions anything i can ex like explain yeah as i'm through yeah please yeah uh, i have a question yeah sure uh, this question is not directly related to fast mm -hmm. uh, look uh, i uh, i want to uh, create a website or a app, uh, a app for mm -hmm. blogging let's like uh, create a blog mm -hmm. like this okay so mm -hmm. uh, currently i'm thinking how can i implement this like uh, i want to uh, use uh, uh, in react as a front end and for backend, uh, I have two things. Like uh, recently, I saw Fast API, mm -hmm. and previously, I know Django, J Django REST, uh, REST framework, DRM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which one is better to use? Both like, have their use cases. Fast API is more flexible for microservices. Like if you use like like you have two or three services like dependent on each other. Like one service is consuming data from another service and is doing something then fast api is better and the background task for fast api it is also really good so if you run if you try to run anything in django uh, that is not inside that view you have to use celery and some uh, task offloader like RabbitMQ or redis to like be able to execute that long running task but here if you want to run something on the same thread you can just use the background task getting to do your job there is a thing in fast api called background task let's say you need to like send an email to some user after 10 minutes they logged in you can easily execute that in fast api so i would say fast api is more modern and more like more features but uh, django rest framework is really powerful for if you're creating a website per se so that like i, sh I showed you the schemas and all right so here yes. are the schemas so these gets replaced in Django REST framework with serializers. Basically, uh, I already use Django, but uh, I didn't use DRF, like Django REST framework. Django REST okay. framework, yeah, yeah. This is a little tricky. If you use Django's class-based views, uh, uh, Django like REST framework has its own type of class-based views, right? And it has role-based permissions and all. So in Django, it is really easy to create a website uh, out of the box. Like you has all the permissions and all, and uh, like all the things like for login, everything is already given to you, and you can just like plug it up and it, it is running, right? But the initial learning curve of Django is little higher than Fast API, so Fast API is really easy to use and learn also. But in Django, if you like to learn Django properly, you have to spend like one and a half months to it. But as I said, if you're cre creating a website, right? So Django yeah. is a way to go, I would say. But if you are creating a microservice, then I say then go with fast API. Okay, got it. All so right. basically, so basically, I want to create uh, APIs for like uh, uh, posting a blog or adding an image and for uh, uh, like uh, adding a command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say learn both because uh, uh, these two skills. Now, if you are working as a backend developer. Uh, still like there is a lot of demand for django so uh, i will also learn both because you can learn fast api uh, in like two weeks uh, okay. to a good extent but if you try to learn django it will take a you around one and a half months okay and one more question santanu uh, can i use both uh, uh, like both uh, 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 both in uh, both apis in point no, 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 that is not preferable. Uh, so if you use like, uh, using for like, a blog, okay. you can use only one. So I would say one use only one. And another really good feature of fast API is it is asynchronous. So if I like uh, do like this, if I go to comment section, I, if I say async, and this is now an async endpoint. Okay. Okay. And if some tasks, 
that are there that need to be completed asynchronously. So I can just add await here. It will work just like the same. But what is hap what will happen? Let's say I added uh, two awaits to this. There, let's say other something is also being executed. So here, let's say this function is executed twice. Okay. So create comment and this one. So what will happen? It will uh, automatically schedule in its inner workings that if there is a delay in input output operations in this create comment section, it will switch back to this create comment section. And when it will execute some of the create comment section here. And if there is a delay, like any, any idle time here, so it will switch back to here. So basically, it will use the a delay that is there, right? So in asynchronous, the main concept is it is running on one thread. And whenever there is a delay between some computation or some IO operations, it will basically switch back to some other task. It will do that. It will won't just stuck into some uh, particular task. So if you're querying from a database like 1,000 records, and the next line uh, of await is uh, like get data from an API, it will not wait till all the thousand records are queried. It will just less if the idle time is there, it will just switch back to that request and do that request and uh, then go back to the querying the data. So it will happen asynchronously. So this is not available in Django currently. Django has async views, right? That is fine. But the middleware and the database, it is not currently asynchronous. Uh, Django is trying to implement that in for future. Uh, let's see. For Django, I think five or six, it may be implemented. So as I said, okay, if you're but... going for a website, you go for Django REST framework. It is really good. Really, really good. Uh, it will give you a lot of things out of the box. And if you want to go with like something smaller, lightweight, but here you have to build everything on your own. Like nothing is given to you out of the box, for, except a few things. Here in fast API, you have to, it is lightweight, but you have to make a lot of things. And it is a lot more flexible than Django. Like for particular use cases, if you want to use Django, it is almost always, uh, sometimes it is impossible because Django works in a monolith monolithic way. So for website, it is really good, but otherwise use fast API, I would say. So like now currently uh, in the previous year, uh, in the college time, I used Django to create a website and created like uh, three to four website. But mm -hmm. now uh, I want to use uh, like create API and use front end uh, to um, like uh, uh, request to, to that. And yeah, yeah, you can do that with Django. So which one is better, like DRM is better or uh, fast API? Like I said, they both have their use cases. Okay. If you're using for a website, then go for Django DevRest framework. If you're using from some particular microservices, then go for fast API. I would say you can use both. So I would say use learn both. Whatever like gives you interest, use that. Okay, okay. okay. So, and something one more like uh, if uh, like uh, I currently am using Django and mm -hmm. and after some uh, I, I I have created three or four microservices in. Uh, like fast API, okay. So mm -hmm. can I call the uh, fast API endpoint through? Uh, no, yeah, yeah, you can do that. That is not a problem. But you have to run the those process differently, right? So yes, if yes. it is running on the same server, you can use two Docker containers to run those two services, and they can communicate with each other. Yes, yes. That is all, right? Huh? Okay. Right. So I think we are done. Uh, Bindu, you can stop the recording if you're there. Yeah, thanks, Antanu. Bindu, are you there? Yes, yes. No, no, Bindu, man. I was asking Bindu uh, Bangeraju, who's like initiated the meeting. Okay, so we are done. Yeah, yeah, we are done. Uh, you guys can like then, if no other questions, you can drop on. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. Can you also uh, fill up the form, the feedback form, before you leave the room? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shantanu. Thank you. Can, thank you. can you send uh, again the feedback form? Sure, sure, sure. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Vindu.